Hi guys and welcome back to another video and today thanks to Lamborghini Pangborn we have one of the world's fastest SUVs the Lamborghini Urus. Now this is a car of split personalities because it's a car with supercar performance but that can also go off-road does come at a bit of a price though, £160,000 starting price. And once you put some options on it, you're looking at a car that's probably gonna be 200 grand or more. But as you may have seen by the title of this video, there is now a car based on the same platform as the Lamborghini Urus for £50,000 cheaper. I'm of course talking about this. So what does that £50,000 really get you? Well, first of all, it gets you this, the Lamborghini badge, and that might be worth 50 grand just on its own, but there are a few other things I think that makes this car worth that extra cash. First of all, it's just the look of it. It is Lamborghini through and through. It's angry, it's aggressive, it's got so much presence on the road, and I just love the looks. This is their first SUV, and an SUV that they've absolutely smashed first time around. I think it looks so, so good. There is actually only one thing that I like more about the Audi RS Q8 than the Lamborghini Urus, and that is this. On the RS Q8, they've managed to hide the radar detector um, rather well in the front bumper. This is kind of like a little alien's peeking out through the front, which when I first saw it, I didn't like at all, but actually I've kind of grown to just accept it. But I think Audi have done a slightly better job in just hiding that detector in the front grille rather well. As we move to the side of the car, you've got these massive great wheels on the Lamborghini Urus, but of course, both the Audi and the Lambo, there's many, many different options that you can choose for these wheels. These ones are the largest they do, and they are absolutely massive. If you want a slightly softer ride on the Urus, you can slightly go, just go down one wheel size and, you, and you'll be all right. Now, the side profile of both cars uh, are very similar. The cars are basically based on the same platform, so not a lot to talk about in the side profile, although, my very good colleague, Tim, loves these rear door handles, which I'm sure he will spend many, many a minute talking to you about door handles if you really want to. Now, the back of the Urus is, I think, really where it comes into its own. Now, if you were to put both cars side by side, they do share some similarities, but this, I think, just looks that much more aggressive. And especially with the quad tailpipes, of course, the RS Q8 only has the two, the standard kind of RS, oval tailpipes that you'd find on a lot of their models. This has four exhausts, which sound absolutely stunning. And this also has the option as well to have an Akrapovich exhaust system, which, well, as you'll hear very shortly, sounds, well, it sounds like war is coming. It is unreal. I flipping love the sound of this. It's so, so good. Let's have a jump inside and have a look at what differences are on the interior. So here we go. This is the best bit about the Urus the interior and being just about ready to set off and drive. First of all, let's have a quick look at what you get. Well, there's a lot of Audi in here, but that's not a bad thing because Audi do know how to make good interiors, especially now with the virtual cockpit that they've got in a lot of their cars. And the first thing you realize is the steering wheel is basically the same Audi steering wheel you'd find on, on, well, nearly any of their cars. A lot of the same switches here. All the window controls are very Audi. This is very Audi. What's really cool, about the Urus is they've kept these nice vents and I like the vents on this because it just just looks quite sporty and quite aggressive. On the new RS Q8 all of the vents are basically integrated in that one long pillar you can see in the middle of the car which looks really sleek and very luxurious but it's not very in your face and aggressive and I, I like the way that this is set out. What's really nice is this is all haptic feedback as well which means when you push a button basically the screen just ever so slightly vibrates to just let you know that you've touched it which I, I think is really cool. Down here this is where it all starts to get very fighter pilot and that's what makes Lamborghinis pretty cool because you've got the flick up switch there to then be able to start the engine and we'll start it and I'll give it a little rev in a second for you. You've then got your anima uh, which sounds like something you need to go and talk to a doctor about uh, just on the left here which is basically all your different driving modes and um, i'm really bad at italian so i'm not going to try and read them all out but they basically go from comfort to sport to Corsa. Corsa is the most aggressive and then you get into uh, three modes that are basically for sand snow and off-road and then on the right here the ego you can pull and then bas basically what that does is customize the options on the left 
To go into reverse, you've basically got this huge, great lever that you pull towards you, and you've also got your park and your manual gear selections there. You've got these very, very cool and very Lamborghini-esque paddles on the left and the right of the steering wheel. And basically, as soon as you get in, everything just makes you want to go on a drive. This has got quite a few different options, so Bang & Olsen sound system, which sounds so good. I'm a huge fan of B&O. Um, and these luxurious seats, which I think just are lovely. These are the Alcantara ones, and I think the only option that this car doesn't have is the ventilated seats, which you can't get as an option on the Alcantara, but if you just have the standard leather seats, you can put vented seats on. Nice panoramic sunroof there, so lots of light in the cabin. Everything just feels pretty good. You know, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be basically the same on the Audi. Everything's gonna feel pretty solid on there. I think you just get the looks and the feeling of really wanting to make this, you know, a supercar better in this. Let's have a look at the numbers compared to that of the brand new RS Q8. Now, as you can see here, you have more horsepower and more torque with the Urus, but it is only 0.2 seconds faster, not to 62. And that does obviously come at a 50,000 pound cost. Just before we take it for a drive, let's start it and you can hear what that four liter V8 sounds like. <laughs> Is the Urus really worth that extra £50,000? Well, yes, 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 it absolutely is. At the end of the day, you're only a Lamborghini. I could just end there, but there's a couple more little points. I think the £50,000 extra for the kind of person that would be buying this car is probably not as much of a jump as it would be for the average Joe. You do get a fair bit more for your money. You get the supercar looks, you get the Lamborghini badge. You basically get this bigger, more exciting and aggressive body and you get the interior, which I think on the Urus is just that little bit more exciting than the Audi. Yes, it's 50,000 pounds extra, but look at it. It's absolutely awesome. Guys, we'll be back with more videos on this channel real soon, but for now, see you later.